Good day for some hive inspections. Look at that. That's for sure. When I open a hive, sometimes I wear protection and sometimes I don't, and there is nothing magical about that. It really depends on some factors that are beyond my control. Is the bees are well fed and happy collecting a lot of nectar, and if the weather is nicer, more often than not, I don't need to wear any protection. Actually, if you look at the old books, like uh, Keeping Bees in Horizontal Hives or by Leanne's, a hundred years ago, many beekeepers were not wearing any veils or any gear to protect themselves from stings. So nothing magical about being able to do it on a nice day. However, if I see that the bees start being agitated, especially because I have no smoker with me, I will certainly put protection on. Another thing about horizontal hives is that because it has this nice layer of cover boards, you can tell a lot uh, without opening the boards by how the colony is doing, by putting the palms of your hands on these cover boards. That's described in Keeping Bees with a Smile by Lazudin. But bees generate a lot of heat in their brood chamber. So just by feeling whether the cover boards are uh, warm or cooler, you can tell the extent of the brood nest. Uh, it's really warm here. It's starting to cool off here. And it's coolish here. So it tells me that probably they are rearing a lot of brood here in this end of the hive and storing honey on this end of the hive. And this is how they do it in nature. That is where the open entrance is. And in long boxes, they tend to keep brood close to the open entrance. This is where it's easier for them to ventilate the brood. This is where all the food is coming from and the surplus honey they store away from the open entrance, which is also easier for bees to protect in case of robbing. Another key to uh, doing it there without riling up the bees, they react to abrupt movements. If I were to sway my arms, I would certainly get stung. They react to animal smells, including sweat or even our breath. So don't breathe on them, don't talk while uh, your face is close to the hive entrance. And finally, colors and texture. I am wearing this shirt for a reason. In nature, there are not many predators that would be blue in color. So if you carry something that's not the color of a bear or a skunk, so avoid grays, browns or black. So the shirts that are of a color that would not be perceived by bees as belonging to a predator help minimize their defensive response on their part. Okay, we're opening this end and there is still no construction on these very last frames, which is very normal considering that it was a first year swarm installed just a couple months ago. And as you go through the hive, do place the cover boards back so don't have a very large portion of the hive exposed uh, you are preventing the loss of heat and microclimate change inside the nest and uh, if you open just wide enough an area for you to be able to work uh, the bees will be very peaceful okay this buzzing that I could hear on this end it was just coming from the nest of the hive and because many of the frames are not filled yet it resonates in the box fooling me into thinking that there was a lot of activity on this end but there is not uh, so certainly we won't have much honey to harvest today which is normal for this time of year anyway i wouldn't be harvesting in august or august i would wait until september october but because this was the first year's swarm, what we'll do, we'll check for the presence of brood, just for demonstration. The amount of bees you see and how active they are tells me that uh, the colony is doing fine. But we'll pull out a couple of frames just to show you what you would be expecting when you open up a nest in the middle of summer. So what we see here is that the bees are building gorgeous new white comb. 
uh, wax is not really yellow. We usually think about beeswax as being yellow, but it yellows with age. The virgin wax that they just built is often very white in color like what we see here. And uh, the more bees use it, they walk on it. And there are deposits of propolis, they rear brood on it. It will then become darker, first yellow, then brown, then even black. Uh, but the freshly built wax is this beautiful white color. This is what we see here. So I'm taking a frame that has no bee activity, so I can slide more frames out and there it's more convenient for me to work. And in a long hive, where many times you can see what you want to see without taking the frame out, just looking at an angle from the empty portion of the hive. These are preparing to build more calm on this frame. All these garlands and they're like bunches of grapes, bees hanging in uh, bunches. This is what they do when they start building calm. Also, I'm seeing here what's called cross combing when they built it in a straight line and then the uh, end of the comb they attach to the next frame. This happens commonly with so-called top bar hives or the, high, the frames that have no foundation, just the top for bar and they build a comb. This is why I really recommend installing a strip of foundation at the top so that they build inside one frame. Right now I wouldn't be able to remove a frame without a lot of disturbance because the comb is curved and goes into the uh, next uh, frame. Okay, yeah, welcome back. <laughs> As Winnie the Pooh said there, I think the bees are suspecting something. <laughs> They're suspicious. And Piglet said, maybe they think you are going to steal their honey. That's exactly that. When we go into the brood nest with no smoke, you will start having our guard bees that are flying out to investigate. Beautiful. So we'll take a frame or two out for you to see. So what Doug has to do is to put a frame with a starter of foundation so that this cross combing is rectified. I wouldn't try to separate the frames in the middle of the season because the, it will break calm and it will start flowing. But uh, later in the year when the summer bees die off there will be small population in the hive going into winter so you'll be able to remove these frames with honey at that time with much less disturbance yeah this is a very nice uh, brood frame brood is all stages of bees from eggs to adult bees so these are sealed cap cells is where they are being transformed into an adult bee and around there you see the white grubs at the bottom of the cells so this is the second stage from the egg then the white larva and then the pupa that you cannot see because the cell is sealed so just looking at this frame alone I can tell that uh, you know we don't need to go through all the frames and find the queen uh, the colony looks healthy and the bees are, are active, they're bringing in pollen, they have brood. Uh, the brood looks healthy. So by all means, are, uh, do learn how to recognize a brood disease because occasionally you may come across a contagious disease like foul brood. It doesn't happen often, but you need to be able to recognize it. And it's easy to tell, it will smell rotten, it will look abnormal instead of these nice white little grubs. You will see some that are being deformed and that are starting to rot inside the cells. 
Uh, nothing like that you can see in these frames. This is totally healthy brood. So just when you open the hive, always be on the outlook for something that looks uh, abnormal and there gives you a clue that there may be a health problem. But I wouldn't expect any health problems in uh, wild swarms. You can tell from the color of the bees, this is very different from what you would get in the bee package. It's much darker, meaning there is a lot of northern bee genetics. And this is not something you can buy commercially. It's only in the wilderness at this point. So you're got, getting the bees that are honed by natural selection to be disease resistant. And they're, I think as the colony expands, they're and keeps growing next year, Doug will be very happy with the results of having locally adapted wild bees. It's a pretty healthy swarm, huh? It is a very healthy swarm. So we are ready to cover it up, put everything back into place, and go check out this other colony that had no queen. And that you requeened earlier this summer. My other advice too is if you first install a swarm, don't fill the whole box with frames because there, it's a smaller colony and they're con controlling cleaning and they're uh, regulating temperature in a large box is a greater challenge for them than in a smaller space. Right. So I would put a piece of plywood as a divider right. when you first install a swarm. Give them a few extra frames to expand, but then move this divider gradually as the colony grows. I it see. will help them stay smaller yeah. and take uh, better care of their space. Right. But that's it for this hive. It looks very healthy and very happy. So inspection one looks pretty good. We're gonna go over to check out the other one in the pastures over there. And we're going to see how the queen has been accepted. This hive looks like it's doing pretty good. It, it does, yeah. You know, another thing that limits its uh, uh, growth is that the queen doesn't have enough calm to lay more eggs and to raise more brood. Because they're starting from scratch. Yeah, so if you had a, a big extractor two months ago and if you were able to extract frames and give empty calm to the queen to lay more eggs, by now you would have a much bigger colony. I see. So next year when um, this is going really good, that's when you maybe have a split or something because they'll have all that extra stuff to start off earlier so they'll be able to build more bees and yeah. make the So what night. you will do next spring, uh, in April when it warms up, give them some empty calm that right. you will have left from honey extraction and put it in the brood section of the hive where the queen will be able to put eggs in and right. they will rear a lot of brood. One month later, you open the box and you will probably have 10 frames of brood. Right. It's a lot. You can confidently split this colony in half and there you'll have two hives instead of one and they will both have very good chances of even producing a good uh, honey crop that following year. Cool. Let's go check out the other hive. Well, I'm excited to look into this hive because of the requeening and that whole situation. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they've taken the queen and what's going on. I'm first looking at the hive entrance to see whether there are any bees that bring pollen. Pollen is primarily used for making royal jelly that they feed to their brood. So if you were to stand here for a few minutes and you don't see a single bee bringing in pollen, uh, it's a question mark. You know, sometimes it can be very hot in the middle of the day and they stop collecting pollen. They like collecting it in the morning when the temperatures are lower and it's moist. Uh, but uh, anyway, one of the indications that the colony is rearing brood is when you see foragers bringing in pollen. Uh, on this hive model, uh, Doug has uh, trays for pest control. 
uh, there is a screen bottom board in this uh, hive and then there are these trays which you fill either with vegetable oil or with uh, diatomaceous earth. So when you take out a tray like that, you can tell a lot of what's going on inside just by looking at the tray. If you were to see a lot of pieces of dead larva, this would be an indication that there is a problem with larva. I'm not seeing anything like that. I actually see a lot of uh, uh, specks of, and grains of pollen and these pellets of uh, orange yellow color that the bees dropped. So that tells me that they are bringing in pollen. These are small pieces of wax that they're building the comb from. Again, some of it falls as construction waste through the screen bottom board and ends up here. But I'm not seeing any uh, signs of infestation with small hive beetles. There are some dead ones here. But uh, it's good just to take a look at this before opening the hive to get an idea of how well it may be going. Also, it will tell you instantly mm, the extent to which the bees have built their nest. You can tell from looking at the next tray that there is not much activity going in the depth of the hive. And always make sure that you close the back door so the bees cannot get in there, otherwise they will perish in the diatomaceous earth as any other insect would. All right, our task in this hive is to check for the presence of brood. It's a very good idea if the hive had no queen and you gave them a new queen or you gave them a frame of young brood to raise a new queen from, to go back in a couple of weeks if you gave a queen or in a month if you gave them some brood to raise a new queen from and to see whether you are seeing eggs and young larvae, which would mean that the culling now has a laying queen and has accepted her. Also, I'm noticing how different the color is of these bees compared to the ones in the previous hive. These are much brighter yellow, a southern strain. This is what you would expect with a queen that was not caught in a swarm, but was purchased and installed in a colony. Okay, from this side I'm seeing they are building new white comb, which is a good indication, and we'll dig a little bit farther to see whether they have brood. This hive is behaving much better, uh, even though they have the same kind of empty frames with no strips of foundation on top. They are staying on course and they are not cross combing, meaning that each comb is built inside an individual frame, like what you will see in a second. I always love the look of fresh calm. This is obviously a honey frame. You are not seeing any brood here. It's just big white cells being filled with nectar. And once they evaporate sufficient moisture from nectar to the point that it's not going to ferment, they what we call cap they put a uh, very thin layer of wax cappings to seal it off like we put uh, lids on our jars when canning or making preserves dogs bees also make a lot of propolis so chewing gum like uh, very elastic uh, material is resins that bees collect from uh, conifer trees, poplars and many other trees that have sticky twigs or buds. And it is a very strong natural antibiotic, one of the oldest antibiotics known to humanity. In ancient India they were putting uh, special concoctions containing uh, propolis on wounds to pr promote wound healing. People have been chewing this as chewing gum to purify their mouth and keep their teeth strong and healthy. Oops. There was no frame in here. So they just built some uh, wild calm going in all directions and a 
attached it to the cover board. I think that's where we actually had put the queen cage in and uh -huh. I kept them separated and then I didn't come back because I was worried about stirring up the smells uh, to actually fix that. So that's totally my fault. Correct, but it happens all the time. So just be aware that the bees built or they come on certain spacing. So if you were to leave a frame out, they will just connect it with their comb going in all directions, something that we see here. If you give them a new queen, the frames still need to be yeah. close together, or you can even attach the uh, a cage uh, into one of the empty frames. But right. The spacing needs to be preserved. Right. So what's going to happen when I want to try to take this out to actually extract it? Uh, will I have to take out two frames together? Exactly. If you see any cross coming, certainly do not try to move like pry out a frame in the middle of the season when there are a lot of bees you'll be able to remove both of the frames that are interconnected or more of them just sliding the whole block of them and obviously you do it either late in the fall when there are fewer bees and they started preparing for winter or first time in the spring but not in the middle of the year when there is the maximum number of bees and a lot and lot of honey right what will happen if you were to break home apart there will be all this honey running down right. and bees will be just glued in there and dying in large numbers. Right. And it can even run over the queen and kill the queen. Yeah. So do not try to fix this cross coming in the middle of the year. Right. So and, like now we're just going to leave it alone. Yeah, we will. And again, this is usually contained to a few frames. So just put a frame with foundation on the edge of this mess, quote unquote, <laughs> so they start their uh, building straight calm again right. and just keep this area intact until there are fewer bees and if you were to have to remove these or cross comb frames it's highly advisable to start from the surrounding frames and try to locate the queen because you just don't want the queen to be in the middle there somewhere running the high risk of drowning in honey once it starts running right. In reality, we do not really have to go into the nest and remove frames because the sheer number of bees that you see here tells me that the queen is there. Uh, if you remember, this hive had no queen there two months ago. So if they still had no queen, the population would have dwindled to almost nothing. If you see all these frames packed with bees, uh, that tells you that there are new generations of bees that have been uh, hatched since our last visit and almost certainly you have a fertile laying queen in there. But for demonstration uh, we're going to remove a frame and take a look at the brood. Pull it up very, very gently. You don't want to roll bees. There is this bee way or a small space between two uh, combs. And uh, if you were to swing the comb back and forth, you could what's called roll uh, the bees between the comb as you're taking one out. Yeah, there it is, a frame of brood. The reason it's called brood is because the bees are covering these capped cells to warm them up the same way as hens are sitting on their eggs. So this is called brood because it has to stay at a very high temperature of 98 degrees. But uh, there it is, there is a lane queen. The pardon is very nice. If you see brood, that's uh, sporadic like a mosaic there are some open cells and some sealed cells this can be indication of a problem but when you see a whole circle patch like here 
that tells you that the queen is doing a very good job and the brood is healthy. So this is called sealed brood. This is the last stage of uh, the larva being transformed into the pupa and then being transformed into the algae. On the other side of the comb, we have the uncapped brood. If you look closely at the bottom of the cells, you see the small, tiny grubs, white grubs floating in a small, wet spot of royal jelly. This is the second stage after the eggs. So the queen doesn't take care of the brood, she just lays the eggs, and then the nurse bees feed the very tiny larva with the royal jelly, which is a mixture of pollen and nectar, specially processed by the nurse bees inside their body. Pretty much like breast milk for humans. Also, uh, be careful when you have a frame that has very young brood on it. This could be the frame that the queen is on. So even though we don't have to find a queen today, uh, when you lower it back, just be very, very careful because should the queen be somewhere on this frame, uh, you don't want to damage her when you slide the frame back into the hive. Very good, I'm very happy with this colony too, considering that they had a very severe small high beetle infestation when we last looked at them and they had no queen. Obviously now they have both the queen and they don't have any problems with the small high beetles. So win, win. All right, I thought it'd be a good way to end the video, we'll be standing in front of the garden. One of the main reasons we like to have bees here at our homestead is for the pollination, because if we don't have bees, we don't have food. That's true. And also, you know, the bees are not staying in the box, they're flying everywhere, and they're making you very much aware of what's going on in the environment right. around you. Everything around you, yeah. Yeah, so seeing your beautiful garden full of food is you know, one of the verifications of having more bees on your land. Yeah, we love it. Mm -hmm. It's getting a little warm in this jacket and those guineas are off the chain. 13 of them coming in every night with those chickens. How do we do it? Yeah. And okay. I, uh, another thing I wanted to mention uh, uh, from the previous videos, people were asking about overwintering bees on a shallow frame. Oh, right. If you were to have the stack of several boxes, most beekeepers would keep our, um, bees over the winter in two deep bodies making for an 18 inch deep uh, uh, brood nest. In the long box uh, you don't have a second story so people have been asking how do you overwinter bees in long hive. Well traditionally in Europe people were using just deeper frames like this. Right. This is what I use. If you don't already have equipment like that had that you want to reuse in the horizontal box I recommend that you go with the European style laying frame from the get-go because it's correct that for winter it's best for bees to have a deeper nest. They store honey on top and they cluster in the bottom and then they gradually move up consuming honey. Unfortunately, most American beekeepers already have the frame that's much shallower, nine inches deep. So you can still keep bees in horizontal hives on these shallower nine inch deep frames if you insulate the boxes well and provide the wind break. Yeah, that's what a lot of people were saying, that instead of switching to the long, couldn't they just insulate the boxes better or something? Yes, but sure. by all means you can right. do that. If but you then you're losing, the lift that's what I was going to say, then you're losing the convenience of pushing and just taking out a couple frames instead of lifting all those supers out uh, every single time, or if you had to get into the brood box, lifting those up. Because that stuff gets really heavy and it I'm does. just telling you guys, when you're bending over like that and you know you got four or five um, hives, it really starts pulling on your back and I'm a pretty big guy so the more I bend over the more it weighs on me so but you know it may be blessing it's like going into a gym and having a workout <laughs> yeah. uh, I visited a mm, treatment free beekeeper with 800 colonies mm. in Vermont this summer he is pretty much managing 800 colonies on his own and he actually says that he enjoys having them in the vertical stacks because when he picks up a 65 pound box it keeps him strong <laughs> and going at the age of 65. 
But you know, I, I, I think I would seriously injure myself if I were carrying 65 pounds. <laughs> well, you have boxes. to build up to it. Yeah. <laughs> he started off with three, four, yeah, five, well, now he's actually... He's been doing it for 40 years. <laughs> so if you want to do beekeeping for another 40 years, if you don't mind, you know, all this strain of doing it, yeah. after 30 or 40 years, you may actually enjoy carrying the very heavy stuff. And have a back, a back like an ox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we got a couple of books. You guys are always at his website. It's Horizontal Hive dot com not an s horizontal hive dot com and uh, they always have great reading material there and another reason why we like dr leo is because he's an open source guy he's got free uh, uh pdfs there free to download if you want to build your own horizontal hive or uh, catch your own swarms or catch your own swarms which we did this year you guys watched we walked you through the whole process using his method using his boxes everything he said we did it and now we have bees so this stuff really works so what what do you got here yeah, I have the two box, uh, books that I translated uh, uh, for you to read. They are the classics of natural beekeeping and horizontal hives. This is what I recommend that you start with if you are new to beekeeping or if you have treating them with chemicals. Just please realize that there are other alternatives. I'm not really saying that this kind of hive is the best one or the only way to go, but I always like people to be informed when they're making a decision of how to do beekeeping or how to garden. So Keeping Bees with a Smile is this book that explains that in addition to the conventional way of keeping bees, uh, dousing them with chemicals and feeding them sugar, there are equally successful ways of doing it the healthy way, the way bees were kept for thousands of years. Uh, without gimmickry, giving them a good lifestyle they, they would enjoy in the wilderness and just harvesting some uh, honey at the end of the year. It's like, I call it my vegan honey because really it's cruelty free and it's made by flowers right? more than they, it's made by the bees. Yeah. The other book that I translated uh, is the classics uh, written in the French language Keeping Bees in Horizontal Highs, George de Lienz. This is the European beekeeper who invented this very deep frame which is still widely used in Europe. Uh, more than one million beehives in just one country, Spain, use this size of frame. This is my preferred format for the horizontal hives. So his book, Keeping Bees in Horizontal Hives, is the best resource there is on keeping bees without breaking your back. Yeah. So you guys, we always encourage you guys to use different methods, right? Two is one, three is two, one is none. So if you can get a couple different systems in your place and then you can compare what works best for you, that's always what we uh, encourage people to do. So yeah. thanks for watching this video. And he just gave you guys an option. You can have industrialized uh, food bees like with the industrial Re revolution, or you can have organic bees and uh, eat better honey. So we'll see you on the next video. Bye.